thank you so much for coming and for staying here. Uh, sorry, I didn't say your name, because I think it's better if you say it yourself. Um, it's Clarity Quirines. It, it, it's a Dutch name, and it has the same I, J, like Corbang, and it's it never, I mean, it doesn't exist in the rest of the world, but it's very Dutch, and it's pronounced A. <laughs> um, I think you're a friend, of, or you were a friend of Anton before you shoot this movie. Um, when and where did you meet? Well, we, we met um, during an exhibition uh, in 2004 or so. He was doing the opening and I had a video installation. And then we kept on, you know, um, talking to each other. But then I moved to London. I was, I was living in New York and he, at that moment he moved from London to the Netherlands. And then he showed me around in London and then one day he asked me to look at a film people were making of him. And I didn't think it was a great film. So I gave my comments and then as a friend I said, well, at least you need one conversation. And out of that one conversation actually um, uh, this, this film uh, happened. Uh, so, it, uh, so I never planned making a film on him. It just happened coincidentally. And I, I normally make political films. I make completely different films than this one. I make I made a film about a gun runner. I made a film about a dictator in Africa. And I made um, and at the same time that I made this film, I made a film in Uganda, uh, in the northern part of Uganda, a film about the International Criminal Court um, and their first case, Joseph Kony. So totally different. Okay, um, this movie took you four years, I think. Um, yeah. How did it go? Like, did you were a lot dependent on Anton's schedule? Or? Yeah, yeah. He would. We, we would talk a lot, and he would always um, inform me about his schedule. And his schedule is really hectic, and he doesn't know where he's gonna go um, all the time unless he films. You know, then he knows that he's for three months in one place, but. In general, he has a complete hectic uh, schedule, and I think we all, you know, the cameraman and the sound man, we just, we had that schedule for a while as well, you know, he would call on Monday and he would say, oh, Arcade Fire is in Leeds, um, you know, maybe that's interesting for the film, and then we would go there, and so, or we would travel to uh, Germany, where there was a concert, so it was very hectic, and I tried very much also in the uh, in the editing. We tried to get that feeling also of you know traveling around and then going to this place and going to that place. Always he's he's always moving basically. Yeah, I think yeah. we can see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, do you see him differently now that you film him and spend so much time with him? Um, well, I think, uh, you know, uh, it was very hard for me to actually found the, the, the film. You know, normally uh, in my other stories, they, these are very dramatic stories and, and uh, with always a lot of confrontation and drama. And I remember that at one point, because he's very, you know, he's not, I mean, he's not somebody who's very happy or, you know, he's quite stable in that sense. And I remember that I really panicked, you know, I thought, where's the drama? What's, you know, what is this film about? And then when I could make the connection with my other work, which are always war stories, it sounds a little bit weird, but I thought, you know, there is maybe a war going on in his head and, and you know, he's a very ambivalent character. So he has one side, but then at the same time, he has a completely different side as well. You know, I think he's, on the one hand, he's looking for artistic um, um, recognition, but then he's very commercial as well, you know, which is, um, I, I can understand. Well, I've never, uh, I've never done commercial work, but um, you know, if you always 